should be recording now. Okay, let's see if this works for a change. All right. So I've been having an interesting conversation with a fellow named, let's see, uh, Gaining Understanding, I think, in the in a Carnades video, which I will link. I'm going to open right now and then pause it. Called "What Is Ontology?" So, um, so the argument has basically been somebody asked, you know, why is there no definition for exist? And so I offered my definition. Now, uh, the the debate evolved into an issue. Um, about category and whether I, for example, should be considered a materialist. I consider myself a materialist. But I believe that we should interpret the world as information. Now, traditionally, this sets off some uh, alarm bells because classically information is a part of this uh, maybe even metaphysical or idealized realm. Now, gaining understanding has not in particular said his position, but it, it doesn't seem to be that of a materialist. He's saying, you know, I'm, I'm more of a realist or an idealist. Now, I say I'm a materialist because the, cr the crucial thing about materialism is not what the material is. It doesn't matter if it's clay or gears or BBs. It doesn't matter what the material is made of. I mean, it matters. It's interesting. But... Uh, that's not what makes you a materialist or not. It's about the fact that it's out there, that it's happening, that if all the people died, it would still be happening. And uh, that there's a material substance. So, for example, he says, well, what is the material? Because he's like, you know, hallucinations are physical. I'm like, yeah, hallucination is physical the same way a picture of a horse is physical. It's different from a biological system called a horse. It's a picture of a horse. Uh, you can distinguish between it pretty easily using your senses and the power of inspection, right? So, uh, you know, a unicorn is an imaginary creature. It has a physical existence on the paper, the blank paper that is your mind. Well, the not blank, not so blank paper that is your mind. So, um, you know, is that some sort of an idealism because it has to do with uh, making ideas material? No, it's the other way around. It's a materialism. I mean, a true materialism, of course, has to accommodate a theory of how information could work. Now, uh, he, he asked me what is, uh, you know, an example if I'm a materialist of these objects that everything's made up of, and so I give him an example of a photon, and I'll add electrons and quarks and neutrons and all the rest all the particles from the standard model, let's say. And uh, we, we could just think about just the photon. So uh, the issue here is that I believe the quantum computing approach to physics, uh, the quantum information approach, so that um, if, uh, you know, the photon is out there, you know, and we're asking what is it, is it a gear or a BB or a little bit of clay or... Uh, right now in quantum information, they just say, well, it's information, you know, and information has an entailment, you know, one situation leads to another situation over time, and so there's a natural uh, transformation sequence that's going to happen between information and uh, with predictable aspects to it, and so... Uh, you know, that makes me a materialist. The fact that the photon to me is information doesn't mean it's not material. It means that material is now information. And theoretically, there's a huge uh, unification at that point between a uh, philosophical uh, study of meaning, knowledge, which is about, I think, relates to meaning, and uh, and information out there in the world. And I think this makes sense because uh, using our senses, we've noticed that, you know, we have sense organs and they seem to be collecting information. And so, you know, a photon that strikes something we see and then hits our eyes is a physical connection to that thing. And then as it rattles through the brain, it remains a physical phenomenon. So it turns out that while we feel like we're in our own little 
universe cut off from all other consciousness. No, we're receiving photons that, in some sense, we share. You know, photons can bounce off our body now. We take a small number of the photons bouncing off an object, and from over there, they take a small number of photons bouncing off an object, different photons. But with this sampling technique, we're all sampling the same objects and phenomena, you know, or can, you know, in principle, for the purposes of this, uh, you know, argument or thought experiment. And so, uh, and so, uh, if uh, if the material of the universe turns out to be information and shared information, well, it's really just why would we call it that rather than something else? Well, because old-fashioned classical objects just don't fit the bill. Information fits the bill, right? That you have a system. Uh, with certain uh, unknown microstates and known macrostates that defines entropy and you know these kinds of things can be defined within the realm of information and they can be defined about the what we call the physical universe so we seem to have a correlation the information we're getting in our mind is from physical events and uh, that creates a correlation. So we're actually turns out we're a lot more connected to the universe than uh, people have thought. And a lot of the questions that we debate, you know, categorizing people as materialists or idealists or realists or any of the other categories, while interesting and you know, I think probably useful to do. I mean, I've enjoyed this conversation just to be talking with somebody that cares about these questions and has knowledge of these categories. But ultimately, I think they're kind of broken categories if you uh, if you interpret them too rigidly, and um, they make assumptions. You know that that the idealist, realist, and and materialist are distinct things. Now, some you know uh, it's not odd for a materialist to be a realist, so it's not like they're entirely distinct categories, but they still imply some distinctions that may or may not be valid, and I think mostly are, are invalid, uh, because while they're good, coherent, logical categories, we have this issue of our biases towards them, where we think that, you know, an idealist, thinking that the world's made of ideas, more or less, I mean, that's a cheap way of putting it, but I think I could defend that, that's not classically how you define it, but an idealist thinking that more or less the world of ideas is the real world, um, or a um, materialist thinking, no, it's material that's not made of ideas, well, those are distinct. The problem is, what about when I decide that the material is information? Suddenly, information, it partakes in the world of ideas, so the information uh, if, if the world, the physical objects, if the photon is a piece of information, suddenly my ideas about it, yeah, it's not the photon, it's my absorption of the photon turning into a color, and yet it might not be the same as a photon, but it does bear a mapping, a relationship, a one-to-one -one possibly, or at least some sort of, um, you know, indirect but traceable, imaginable, you know, concrete, no gaps, continuous relationship to the other things that this physical object, this photon, has interacted with. So um, that would seem to break down uh, assumptive distinctions between uh, uh, a materialist and an idealist. And and uh, but one way to interpret that would just be to say, oh, you can be a materialist and an idealist. The world of ideas is the world of information. The world of, you know, quantum states is a world of information. Turns out they're not actually different worlds after all. Well, that's lucky because we live in this world, and it'd be better to be a part of it than not. So, cheers. Hopefully, that worked. Quick upload.